It takes five more steps to reverse a four element list. That makes 15 steps. It takes six more steps to reverse a five element list. That makes 21 steps. Because each additional element requires not just more steps, but more more steps, the time ref takes is proportional not to the number of input elements, but to the square of the number of input elements. That's why rev gets so slow when the input gets big. Another way to understand why rev is slow is that it constructs intermediate results like dot bytes that are not part of the final result dot bytes man. That's right, I just said that the list dot bytes is not part of the list dot bytes man. Do you see why? Intermediate results like dot bytes are produced by one call to add to end only to be immediately consumed by the next call to add to end. We can see that in this step by step calculation, or we can draw how ref decomposes its input using rest alongside how ref composes its output using add to end. Again, intermediate results like dot bytes are produced by one call to add to end only to be immediately consumed by the next call to add to end. That's what rev spends most of its time on. In contrast, fast rev never constructs any intermediate list like dot bytes. That's why fast rev is much faster than rev. More specifically, we say that fast rev takes linear time, whereas rev takes quadratic time. So one lesson to learn is that churning through intermediate results is a great way to make a program slow. Let's now apply this lesson to a different problem, sorting. We've learned several algorithms for sorting in this class. Because they decompose the sorting problem differently, their performance is different, not just in terms of how much time they use, but also in terms of space and energy. Insertion sort, if you remember, follows the list processing template for structural recursion, so it decomposes every non-empty problem into its rest like rev does. That means the intermediate results here are the sorted suffixes of the list. Every sorted suffix is produced by one call to insert, only to be immediately consumed by the next call to insert. We can see that in this step-by-step -step calculation too. Again, every sorted suffix is produced by one call to insert only to be immediately consumed by the next call to insert. By the way, insert is like add to end in the sense that its performance is linear, at least in the worst case where the new number has to be inserted all the way at the end. Therefore, the performance of insertion sort is quadratic. What about merge sort? Why is merge sort faster than insertion sort? Well, our merge sort has two stages. First, the computer decomposes the problem into a merge tree, and then the computer processes the merge tree to produce the sorted list. The intermediate result in the first stage is just the generated merge tree. I'll get to it in a minute. The intermediate result in the second stage is sorted sublists like with insertion sort, but the good news is the sorted sublists in merge sort are less data than the sorted sublists in insertion sort, and here's why. The amount of intermediate result on each level is same as the length of the original input list. So if we use the letter n to mean the length of the original input list, then the total amount of intermediate result is n times how many levels there are. For example, here, the decomposition is four levels deep. That's proportional to log n, the logarithm of n, it turns out. So the total amount of intermediate result is n times log n. As n gets bigger, n times log n grows more than n, but less than n squared. In other words, more than linear, but less than quadratic. That's why on big inputs, merge sort runs faster than insertion sort. What about the merge tree? It is produced by generate merge tree only to be immediately consumed by merge tree result. The size of the merge tree is again proportional to n log n, so it doesn't really affect our rough analysis. But to make merge sort run a little faster, we can get rid of this intermediate result by fusing 
the two stages into one. We just have to change where the constructors of merge trees, which are make single and make split, are used in generate merge tree. Instead of make single, just put what merge tree result does with a single merge tree, namely list. And instead of make split, just put what merge tree result does with a split merge tree, namely merge. We now have a function, let's call it generate merge tree result, that no longer returns an intermediate merge tree, but rather directly returns a sorted list of numbers. So let's also fuse the purpose of the two stages and fuse the examples of the two stages. We have to rename the function everywhere to generate merge tree result. And fuse where the two stages are used in the main function merge sort. Our test still pass. This fusion does not affect the termination statement, which is still required because generate merge tree result is still a function with generative recursion in the sense that it contains recursive calls that do not follow a processing template.